Lahamu, Demon of Pus, Virgo, Mars, 6 to 1, Lamort, False Pope, Ruler over the Aeon of 12 Generations. At the beginning of this Aeon, there was the Great Flood that destroyed much of Iraq and South America. At the end of this era, the pyramids had been built, the civilizations of Mesopotamia had recovered and become empires, and there was sustained transatlantic trade between the Egyptians and the Olmec of South America. This era was marked by a rush for a recovery from the climatological cataclysm of the final floods at the end of the last North Hemisphere Ice Age. This rush eventually began to exceed the capacity for sustenance provided by the environment. At this point, the empires of the ancient world have all followed the same course, be it the earliest Sumerians, the mighty Egyptians, or the more recent Aztec. When the local resources become scarce, an unwinnable war is begun to conquer the resources of the nation's neighbors. Thus, by the end of this aeon, all the great attempts at recovering the global civilizations of before the floods had already died out to internal schisms and succumbed to the enemy within. Anshar Bone Scepter Jupiter, Libra, 1 to 6, False Pope, ruler of the Aeon of Seven Sethites. Prior to the final floods at the midpoint of summer in the northern hemisphere, a great global civilization flourished. This was the epoch of Lemuria, and our records relate much of their lifestyle at this time. People primarily lived on the coasts and kept away from the last remaining tribes of Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons who migrated much further inland. This period of time is described diversely as an era of peacefulness and luxury, with the greatest temptation being to risk losing sobriety. It was during this time that much of the originally scientific cosmologies that have become the great myths of the world were first drafted. The meanings of all the aeons were compared to try to find some solution to unlocking them for one's own good. It was for the better portion of this aeon, our own human species that was in a minority among the other families of hominids. This was the period when the first European mynheers were raised, as well as the first stone heads of Easter Island. Mamu, Wing Scorpio, Mercury, 2 to 5, the tyranny of any pope, ruler over the aeon of 7 Nephilim. It was in this aeon that the Homo sapiens species distinctly diverged from its ancestors, the Australopithecines and the Neanderthals, and began competing for attention against the Cro-Magnons and the Clovis, or grooved wear people. During this aeon, the Clovis finally became extinct, and the last of the Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons appear to have died out in the massive floods of successive aeons. At this stage, we were learning to use tools that had been developed many aeons previously by other species of hominid. For a variety of physiological reasons, our species finally won out in the end against the other species of hominids. This was the era during which the final populations of species were still recovering from the beginning of the end of the last North Hemisphere Ice Age and resettling into new, often vastly different environments. Migration among the tribes of early people was the primary way of survival and gone were the days of comfort in Antarctica. Nibiru, seven death. Nibiru, Sagittarius, four to three. Zer and Pin, literally the short face, ruler over the Aeon of seven powers. During this era, 
There was a great amount of conflict between various tribes of Australopithecines and Neanderthals from various different equatorial regions. Apparently, intercontinental travel was common, although there was a much greater influx of immigrants from the glaciating Antarctica than there appears to have been diversity of cross-cultural trade. The first great civilizations of the equatorial regions can be dated to as early as this time with the origination of the Vedic caste system, the civilization of Sumeria, and the practice of pyramid building in Egypt and China. By this eon, the great Atlantean civilization that had flourished in Antarctica had completely concluded. It was during this eon that the gods were said to be at war with one another. City-states often fought, but more often trade prevailed. The tension of evacuating Antarctica was fading, but the security in a new home the Australopithecines of the day did not yet have. Apsu one death. Sun, Capricorn. Three to four. Zer and Pin, literally the short face. Ruler of the Aeon of Twelve Archons. It was during this Aeon that the Australopithecines began to interbreed with the North Hemisphere Neanderthals to beget the three chief species that would compete for dominance for the next four Aeons namely the Cro-Magnon, the Clovis, and Homo sapiens. This period corresponds to the Australopithecine migrations out of Antarctica following the primary Aeonic summer seasonal flooding of the southern hemisphere as the northern hemisphere ice caps continued to recess at a rapid rate. This was the eon when the Australopithecines who had begun to migrate out of Antarctica in the previous eon began to colonize the equatorial regions. Gaga, Packstrap, Aquarius, Pluto, 5 to 2, 3 over 2, ruler over the eon of 7 and Lelites. During this aeon, the rapid thawing out of the icebergs above Europe and North America was threatening the South Hemisphere network of coastal civilizations centered around Antarctica. Prior to this time, the equatorial regions were only beginning to be explored by the northward migrating Australopithecines of Antarctica. It was unknown then if the regions could sustain the massive influx of population predicted as necessary. There was a general panic among the Australopithecine population of Antarctica. They recalled legends of previous wars between the North and South Hemispheres to compete for territory following sudden global climatological shifts. They desired to avoid this, but began reluctantly preparing for war in case one seemed unavoidable. The general stress level became unbearable, and the original Atlantean idealisms of the Antarctic Australopithecines had been lost by this eon. Kishar, Skull Scepter, Saturn, Gemini, 5 to 2, 23, ruler of the aeon of 12 Anunnaki. Following the great north-south wars during the prior aeon, the Australopithecines of Antarctica lived in harmony with their environment and did not suffer any seriously adverse effects in their climate due to the beginning of the end of the last North Hemisphere Ice Age. This was the time of greatest study and advancement in the sciences of the mind, and the Australopithecines of Antarctica from this aeon could achieve telekinesis and levitation of massive stone blocks was common knowledge. This was the aeon of the most high Atlantean idealism among the Australopithecines of Antarctica. It was during this era that all the high sciences and laws of Atlantis as they are now known among the POD were originally codified. Although it was highly idealized, the forms of pure Atlantean democracy as laid out in the constitutions 
has never yet been put into public practice. In the end, the primary fall of Antarctic Australopithecine Atlantean civilization was that it remained loyal to the royal dynasty of kingship and never achieved the democracy it idealized.